Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm going to paint an emu today. It's similar to the ostrich painting I did, oh, maybe a year or so ago. I'll link the ostrich in this video's description. And I'm tempted to put a drooping daisy in that sad face. <laughs> Look at those eyes. The reason I'm painting is the eyes, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's like little dots of light on the uh, cheeks above the eyes. I'm going to paint it on a 5x7 cradle wood panel from US Art Supply. It's an inch and a half thick. I've got, I've got clear gesso on it. Okay, let's have some fun. Just pop it in to set the table. So I'm using primaries. I always, uh, it's not exactly because that's thalo blue green shade. I love that color. <laughs> just, I like um, thalo blue too, also. Uh, and then this is quinacridone magenta. They're all Liquitex. Cad yellow medium hue. Oh, I buy, here, I guess as long as I'm showing you, I buy this in a jar because I go, I go through a lot of yellow because it's not as strong of a pigment as like this thalo blue green shade. It just takes like a pinch of thalo blue and a lot of yellow to make a pretty green. Titanium white. You just, as an artist, you probably go through a lot of white. I think that's pretty common. And Mars black. And then I'm trying to make, I was trying to mix a bright aqua green. I started with too much white. Um, but I'm pretty close. So that, so this color is white, uh, yellow, and some phthalo blue green shade. I don't know how it's gonna look on camera. I think this is deeper. And it tells you, so PW6 is white. Here. See how that says PW6? The closed, the black box means it's opaque. You don't, it's not a transparent color. And then I don't know what PG7 is. I bet we could look on uh, here. I doubt it's this one. Yeah, this is PB15. Anyway, so you should be able to mix it. But I'm pretty close. I'm happy with it. I just wanted to do it for fun. And then um, I've got a nice, like, ocean scene going here with even bubbles, maybe, <laughs> for my emu. Emu? Yeah, that's how you say it. But that's okay. I'm just playing with the background, having a little bit of fun. Um, the aqua color I made and the yellow makes a pretty green. I had some pretty greens going in there occasionally. I used a three-quarter inch filbert brush from Royal and Lang Nickel. It's their mental line. I've had this, I've mentioned this before recently. I mean, this brush just has lasted a long time for me. Of course, I'm taking care of it. The little ones, I just, I, it's a combination of they don't have very many bristles and I don't take care of them. I don't know if you can see that one. I'm not using that brush, but it's getting fuzzy. It won't hold. It's separating. All kinds of things are happening with it. Let's see. Oh, and I also used, where'd it go? I used a little flat brush. Oh, I used just a, it's a crap. Oh, here, it's on the floor. It's a craft brush, um, probably from Michael's. It came in a pack of, I don't know how many. Oh, three eighths inch, a quarter inch. And I just used it to make some of the circles. Okay guys, I'm gonna let this dry. I've printed out and cropped my emu to five by seven. And then I just Photoshopped kind of where the neck's gonna go. I Googled emus and their, their necks get, start to get wider pretty quick. And then I just photoshopped where the corners are so I know where to trim it when I cut it out. I'm gonna scribble on the back with some chalk pastel. 
and then tape it to my, and this is nice and dry, tape it to here and then trace it with a ballpoint pen. I like doing that because I can make it traceable for you guys, um, but I haven't been because you're gonna see the details and the changes in shapes, like that crack in the mouth, and it gets light there. It'll, I think you'll get better results if you trace the photo than if you trace my traceable, because my traceables have my handwriting. I wonder how many times I just said the word traceable. Okay, um, I'll be back in a bit. Hey friends, let's chat about the eyes for a minute here. I was gonna paint this more neutral beige like the reference photo, but so far, so far I'm going with color. Um, I like that this emu looks cross-eyed. And then I, here, maybe you can see it in the reference photo. So I'm using blues, I've got some purples. But I'm starting to cover them up with some of the blues. I can come back with the purples. Here, maybe let's do this first. We'll go close. So this eye is more developed than this eye. And I started with just filling in the, the iris, the dark part of the eye, with a couple different colors. There's kind of some purple or some blue. It started with a brown. And then this yellow is just to help warm up that part of the eye and then I've got some purple and then this eye I've put in more detail there's kind of a little ridge or a lip those kinds of things there's a, a brown piece that I then I use purple but I don't think you can tell but it's okay I'm just I switch color sometimes just for interest um, sometimes because you can see it in the reference photo Okay, now let's do this. So it's not yellow, but it's warmer here. It's actually kind of a pinky purple. But So there I have the light, whatever color that is. And then it isn't really blue. You could use a brown. The value is more important than the color. And then it gets a little lighter there, a little lighter here. And then there's like a white triangle there. So kind of a white triangle there. So I'm painting lines and shapes and kind of aiming for the right value, like this sort of eyebrow is there. And it's not exact. <laughs> That's huge. Maybe I can do this. So the more finished eye to the more finished eye that might help help you a little bit they start out and they don't look so good and then they start to look a little better and I keep working them and it's great I think it's great to paint like these eyes are fantastic you've got I mean they're cross-eyed which is cute and I don't know if it really is it just looks that way and then you've got this if I touch it with my finger my eye petal close or get bigger or something so these white lines on the eyeball are actually a reflection I think of these and then you get some shadows from the eyelashes so if you want to learn how to paint eyes get photos that show the eyes really well and practice a lot of times the color is opposite the highlight and that's true here there's a little bit of color opposite the highlight on the eyes okay Hopefully those comments help. I can always tone it down if I don't like the color, but I might leave the color because I've got a bright colored background 
And I like, I was kind of guessing, but these swirls kind of emphasize the eyes. Almost looks like a frog. Just what I was thinking. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. A couple of comments. So I mixed a cool brown, so uh, yellow, quinacridone, and black, more black. And I pulled a little bit of that dark brown out and put red and yellow in it. Now I kind of almost have a, oh, I don't think it's a red oxide, maybe a burnt sienna. I'm kind of looking at my paintings, but they're behind me. <laughs> it's a rusty brown color. And then I was painting more little feather strokes on the emu that I think I'm gonna, well, this color might be kind of light. Um, I think I'm just gonna hint at them. And I think this is gonna be too light, but then I can come back and kind of blend it in. Yeah, that is too light. And the other thing too is it'll dry down darker. I've got so much paint in my brush because I was mixing with it, I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel and oh this is a um, angle brush from Royal and Lane Nickel it's a 3 8 inch and I think I've already mentioned this round brush I've been using from Princeton it's a number four so I'm just playing with values I painted kind of green underneath the mouth and I'm gonna come back with some white, I think, right here. We'll see how it starts to look when I, I'm, I'm basically puzzling it out. So even though I'm not painting every feather, that's awfully dry, and I don't have much paint on my brush after I wiped it all out. Um, brush stroke direction still helps you. So it's not this warm in the reference photo, but I'm, I, my colors are already off of the reference photo. Okay, I just thought I'd pop in with what I'm up to. Here, maybe we'll do a screenshot in progress. Okay guys, hope a couple of those comments helped. I'll be back in a bit.
Hey friends, isn't this fun? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I think I said it's a couple days later, maybe more than that. Um, I think I said I was going to do it softer colors, but it just, the eyes expression just make me laugh. So I went with a lot more color. I ended up glazing some brown over the greenish um, on the under shadow side of the beak, which I like. I think it helps. I don't know if it needs it. You guys can let me know in the comments, but I think it helps. The beak kind of looked like it was sitting on top of the feathers. It does in the reference photo. But I, I, okay, I've said that a couple times. I kept playing with adding some slightly lighter values. I put some purples in here just to help tie it in. Um, what else? Saved white. And it's pretty thin, so it's not white white in a bunch of areas, but saved white sort of for last. Oh, um, took my angle brush and mixed kind of a blue green and then it's thin so and I just swiped it and then I get scared because it's bright but then it dries down because it's so thin did it here did one here I like that in in the blue background when I painted the background I've got kind of these swirls emphasizing the eyeballs I mixed a little orange here and there and glazed it over the eyes here let's do a screenshot and we'll do a tour. And I just kind of played with a couple layers bringing up the glow. <laughs> I love the dots. So the dots are in the reference photo. I just love them. I think that's fun. Sort of like splattering, but not, you know, just kind of putting almost an oops in there, which is fun. A black dot. I'm trying to entertain both with color and brush strokes and those kinds of things. I did paint on the bottom, but not as detailed. And there, there, there isn't anything on the sides. Here, let's get the reference photo. Maybe we'll get the my unmarked up re reference photo here. Will that fit? Oh, I can scoot it. You know, when I'm looking at it side by side, there's a lot of things I like and some things that we could change. I could keep working on it. So I've been working on this for, oh, what time is it? It's almost dinner time, I think. Yeah, so four hours this afternoon plus, I don't know how many hours. Um, if I really get into a painting about this size, it could go seven, eight hours, even though this is a five by seven. That's not very fast, but it's because I keep playing with, you know, I start playing with texture and layers and it's just fun. It's fun. Um, give it a try. I'll link the other, let's see, I think it's an ostrich video um, in the this video's description. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Oh, did you get much of a tour? I can't remember. We'll do another one quick. I might have gotten sidetracked. I like a little purple on the, it almost looks like a nose, but it's the tip of the beak. Let me know if you like that, or maybe it looks too much like a nose. Oh, here's a here's something. So my black, blackest black is the underside of the, we'll call it an eyelash. I think it's the actually like the eyelid. And then it goes a little lighter, and then I have a little blue and then that looks white, but I don't think it is. And sometimes you'll get reflections of the little eyelashes on the eye. So instead of the darkest being the top of the eyeball, it's underneath the eyelid. It doesn't always have to be that way. And then usually your most color is opposite the reflection. If you can't see what to do in your reference photo, like you're painting a pet portrait or something, that helps. Okay, I think I did a tour, so hopefully that wasn't a double. <laughs> so fun to hang out with you. I love the comments. You all are the nicest people on the internet, and I've made so many wonderful connections. I, I am very grateful. I super, super appreciate your support. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.